Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Yes, I am Marlon Alex James, former Slango M killer and Kada and ATM striker. You are listening to Bola Bola Show. Hello, listener, and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show. It's me, Alvin, and together with me today is my buddy Steven. So, how's things, Steven? Hi, Alvin. Everything is, uh, you know, going smooth. We're still in another lockdown, but, uh, you know, we're going to have an interesting episode. So, you know, hopefully everyone out there do enjoy our podcast while keeping yourself at home and staying safe. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, now with the, with the Olympics and all uh, ongoing, you know, uh, is there any any moments in these Olympics that captivated you before we close this weekend? Well, there's plenty, actually. I know there's so mm. many events, but I think the one, one that we are looking for to captivate us is hopefully our cyclists. So we'll be able to... Yeah. to clinch uh, a medal tomorrow in the uh, respective event. Yes, absolutely. And we wish uh, Dato Azizo all the best in, yep. in, in that event. So, you know, uh, let's we can get on to our show today. So, Stephen, uh, who do we have on our show today? All right. None other than a legend in Malaysian football. He made a name himself with Slango, MK Len, Kada, and ATM. Bola Bola Show would like to welcome Marlon James, all the way from Rhode Island, United States. Hello, Marlon. Hello. Good afternoon to you guys and good afternoon to Malaysia. Okay. So, Marlon, I mean, uh, perhaps maybe you want to uh, share with our listeners of uh, what, what sort of projects or, you know, sort of uh, what, what are you up to these days since, you know, you're, you're no longer actively playing professionally. So, what, what are you up to these days? Um, at the present, I'm... Um, you know, employed by the government of Man- of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines mm-hmm. in the I mean in the area of ministry of sports. I, I am sports coach for the ministry of you know sports where we dealt with the development of sports mm-hmm. in primary school, secondary school, and wherever it, it's in in the community. Okay. So okay. that's that's what I've been been up to since you know I've been retired from football and. Been back in seven months, but at the moment I'm in Rhode Island in the USA on a, mm. on a mini vacation. So I see, I see. Okay, now let's go back to when you first arrived in Malaysia to play for Slango MK Land in 2005. Perhaps you want to care to share with us how did that move came about? Well, I actually didn't arrive to play for Slango MK Land. Mm. I, I arrived, I arrived in, in Sabah. Oh, on, okay. On two weeks. On a two weeks trial, so um, Key Gums is the one who, who invited me over because mm-hmm. that that thing is a week before the St. Vincent and the St. Kitts played a World Cup qualifying game. Mm-hmm. So I, I, a home and away game, I both scoring both games, and you know, he, he, he comes over after the, the last game in St. Kitts and said, um, I, I'm, I'm looking to get you to come over to play with my team. So invited me over and yeah um Sabah actually wanted to sign me mm-hmm. but um the the sultan was not in 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 Sabah at the moment and mm-hmm. then I got two two weeks in the, I had two weeks in the in Malaysia so mm-hmm. you no know, I doesn't like to stay over my 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 time that I get in the country so mm-hmm. within two weeks yes I I tell him I'm not gonna wait I I just left Flew mm-hmm. back home, and right away um, I arrived back home two days after. I got a phone call. Yes, you need to come back to Malaysia. There's a team who's interested in signing. And right away I just came back and, and met up with the coach and the the agent straight from the airport actually mm-hmm. and signed the contract. Okay, and that's okay. how it started. I wow. see. Okay. So, so you came here, you went back, and you came back again. So, very interesting, Malone. And uh, you know, so what was your first impression of Malaysia back then when when you first arrived? Um, when my manager told me, um, mm-hmm. we're gonna send you to Malaysia, I said, "Where is Malaysia?" Um, he said, "It's somewhere in Southeast Asia." Then I, I I have a look on on the map and stuff, and I, but you know, it's my first time traveling in in that region and then when I got to England then I realized yes it's a Muslim country because 
I was the only non-Muslim person on that flight. So then I have started having a, a, you know, a little nervous situation because I don't know how, you know, the culture and the beliefs and how people live in, in this region. But, you know, arriving in Malaysia again, arriving in Malaysia, um, I said, I'm, I'm here to, to complete something that you know no one have done from my from my island is is owning a, a professional you know um, career but the, the thing about it um i always been disciplined very disciplined and, and dedicated and, and and determined you know so um I, I kept very disciplined you know where you know i i tend to you know be what the coach and the managers of instilled to me about malaysia itself and then more and more I go and I, I learn from the players about the culture. And I, I just kept in, in that in that frame of mind where, you know, it's it's a country that is so different from where I'm living. So I have to adapt to to that level of, of living. So but you know, as I as I go on in, in, in time and time, I started enjoying and started feeling comfortable. You know, I started playing much better football. Year and year, weeks and weeks, started training hard. But I, I must give a lot, of, a lot of respect to, to Coach Hang Ming and Michael Palani. They, they really, really helped me a lot through that that period. Yeah, especially Coach Hang Ming. You know, he used to be the one that picked me up a lot to take me to training. So yeah, and he, he always talked to me in, in, in a way that. I, you know, I must be very focused and, and dedicated on, on what I'm here for. And, you know, you must try to always excel. So, you know, and, and I, I get to meet both coaches, family, and they accepted me as, as you know, um, you know, part of the family. So, yes, I, I really do enjoy, you know, that period where, you know, it was, it was a learning period. And, you know, then after three months, I, I was able to get a cell phone after three months. I did have a cell phone within that three months mm -hmm. because I, I basically didn't go anywhere. I just go to training, come back to the, the condominium. You know, there's a restaurant downstairs. I eat at the condominium every day. For I never went months. outside. For three months? For, for the first three months, yes. Wow. Any particular food that you took to your liking? Um, yes, Nazi Gurren. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. That that probably be one of the better things that I I had at the restaurant. So yeah, and I I love having I love I'm a breakfast person, you know. Mm, okay. From mm. the eggs, toast, you know, beaten fruits and stuff. Yes, you got yes. I'm a big 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 breakfast person. <laughs> okay. You know, many fans in Malaysia will remember you for being part of that Kedah team that won back-to-back -back travel, something which is unprecedented and never been accomplished by any other team since then. I mean, in your view, what was so special about that team? Um, as I just mentioned before, you know, that, that learning period, you know, getting into Malaysia and was able to, to be around Coach Hang Ming and, and Michael Palani. And I, I met some really good professional in, in that period of... of you know, where there was a Croatian guy who I used to live with. Yes, and then after I, I get into Kada, it was more of a felt of, of being home. Yeah, right away, um, you know, calling us up, Bernard Hoggins, it's from St. Vincent. Um, I am the one who invited him over to play for Kada. So, you know, coming and playing with Kani, it even, even made me feel more at home. It's just that when I arrived in Kedah, the day I arrived in Kedah, there was fans at the airport, there was fans at the training ground, the force, you know, and, and fans coming up to you, shaking their hands in, you know, welcome. And it's been a continuation of that all through that two years. Everywhere I go, everywhere I turn up, there's always that, you know, big appreciation and, 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 Always willing to to have a chat and sit down, and that's something about me. I I think that what what transfer in that 
successful period in, in, in Kada is that I, I was able to sit down with fans a lot and, and, and chat and appreciate, you know, the, the state for, for football and for the, you know, the leadership of the, the Sultan, which is the King of, I was a great, great admiration of, of, of that man also. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things is that we always used to be so happy that when he turned up to the game, because when he turned up to the game, oh, we, we feel so energetic and always willing to, to, to put off a good show. And, you know, we, we take the man of that two years at home, you know, where we, we, we know we're not, we're not going to lose any game at home. Mm -hmm. And Marlon, you know, would you consider your time in Qatar as uh, the highest point in your football career? Um, I will. I won't just say the highest point, you know, but mm -hmm. the most successful because everywhere I went, I, I is a different level and, and a different age age group of myself, mm -hmm. you know. But um, yes, I achieved so much in in Qatar, but my 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 most, I think it's. I, I, that I really, really was was really proud of. I, I do proud of, of, of Kada, but when I went to ATM, there was a lot of doubts, even from mm -hmm. the Kada FA, even from the Kada FA also, because my actually first choice coming back to Malaysia in 2012, was 2011, was Kada. And I, I did contact, contact the, the FA there. And they, they, they thought I was not, you know, I was not ready. I was not able to play at that level of football again. So um, Satya rung me up, and I get into the ATM. And again, when I when I when I get into the ATM, I, I met some some players there. You know, I, I must I must mention Tash because he was the first one that you know arrives at the hotel and and, and pick me up to drop me to training and. That was something that I really appreciated because I, I felt that that every time we, we drive into training, it's something that he, he appreciates doing and he does it from the heart. But you know, arriving at training and I, I see some regular faces, or oh, the twin boys, um, Zakwan, Ideal, Harry Dinuma, Rizal, Zamri. Oh, then I, I started, yes, this is, is something special, you know. Mm -hmm. and. I know is is all of us around the same age group as well. So um, yeah, I was really really proud about my progress at that age, because I felt, you know, that that first period of two months was very difficult to get back into, because I didn't play football for a year and some. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, after I started getting getting that 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 regular training in, you know, morning and afternoon, certain days. And then I, I started getting into the system of, of Satya. I, 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 I was really, really happy because, yeah, at that age, you, 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 it's very difficult to maintain that, that level of football and a level of fitness. And more and more I go on with the ATM, I, get, I got better. I felt better. I get more fit. And I, I'm, I'm getting much older as well. So, <laughs> yes. I, I see, it's two different, two, two different types of, of situations. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 I think they get what you mean, Malone, but uh, you know, truly, uh, I, I, w I would have to say, you know, you are, you are definitely a goal scoring machine, you know, <laughs> like you really know your way, your way to the goal. And, you know, me, me uh, being a Salengo fan, I was very devastated, uh, you know, back in 2008, uh, you know, when uh, you went to the, you know, won the Malaysia Cup. And I remember that goal that you, that you scored and you, you know, the commentator, in fact, uh, com uh, compared you to Usain Ball because you took out your boots and you kissed the boots. Would you, do you remember that, that moment? Scoring yeah, that yeah. E e equalizing, equalizing goal? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I remember that because um, I, don't know, I don't know if you noticed this. there is something the Kada fans have been doing for the last couple, couple of weeks. They actually... Um, Okay, first, sorry to cut you off, but first, I don't know if the nation aware of the, the volcano eruption in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in, mm. in, in, in April, you know, yes, it, it, it definitely take a toll in the, in the country. There are a village that is not able to, to, 
to be back in in living condition. So there's a lot of evacuate. There's a lot of evacuate all over Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, who is out of food and shelter and clothing. Mm -hmm. So I I reach out to several persons in Malaysia. Um, but the first person who who actually contacted me is is Azrael. So you know I I spoke to him about you know what I can ask for from 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 you know clubs in Malaysia for financial donation where I can you know donate it to mm -hmm. to an organization in in, in Saint Vincent who who do mm -hmm. who does donation for the evacuate. So they they actually come up with an idea where they they they, they print some t-shirt and they and they put on it my face with a with that same picture with holding up the shoes mm -hmm. you know with, with the, the sign above it gold machine. So they have been doing some sales on that for the last two weeks or so and some of the proceeds from that will be sent to me to donate to an organization in St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. Amazing, yes. amazing. Back to, yeah, fantastic work, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah back to the, to the question. Um, sorry, but if it's, if it's one team I always, you know, up to play for again is it, Slango. It's a team that I, I, I always, I would love to play for Slango. <laughs> Definitely, but yes, but I didn't play for them. But ever even when I was in MKLN, Slango was my biggest rival. When I get mm -hmm. in Kada, Slango was my biggest biggest rivalry. Yeah. And then ATM again, ATM also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to love this, but no, when I was in ATM, it's more of Clanta, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. I, I love, I used to love going over in, in Clanta Stadium. Mm -hmm. And, and, I don't know if you remember, ATM was one of the first teams to, I think it's over two and a half years or so, to win a game there. So mm. that is something that I was really, really in, interested in, in, in doing. So, you know, I, I used to in, love come up against um, it, um, Clanton at that time. I see. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, in 2008, uh, when the Football Association Malaysia made a drastic decision to... to but foreign players from competing in the Super League. I mean, how devastated were you by that decision? Because you were at the, you were, the, you were having a high time with Kada, and then now they had to leave everything. Yeah, because um, I, I didn't think it's a, it's a decision that made based on football itself. Mm -hmm. I think it's based on the domination of, of Kada at that time. Mm -hmm. Personally, I felt like. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 to me, to me, it it was a situation where it would have continued for years mm -hmm. that domination, because we we actually was in in that sense of you know where you have you know like the Barcelona and the Real Madrid in, in Spain, mm -hmm. okay, and the, the Manchester at the period in the nineties. You know, we felt unbeaten. Not just in a, in a boasting way of anything, but we know we had to work hard. And mm -hmm. we always work hard in training, you know, and we, we were a, a good unit together, you know, playing together with each other. You know, that, that force. We, we, had, we actually had a force level that was so, so, so into, you know, understand each other football and know what we need to do for each other. You know, with the, the back four of, of Bonner Huggins, you know, Victor and Rack. Shafijan, and then we have Turu on the right side. And then in midfield, we had a, a combination of, you know, Bunyamin and, and um, that, 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 you know, that slighty, um, Fozzy, 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 Palom, they call him. You know, and, you know, then at times we have Badul Bati on the, on the, on the left and, I mean, on the right, sometimes as my we with me up front. And we, we tend to rotate it up sometimes, you know, where me and with a start. And then we had another youngster who come out of the, the President Cup team. Fazli, I think, what is his name. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, it, it's, it was a situation that young was able to mix with not much old players, but we, we were more of a leader on the team. And, and the young players was able to 
to to cope with our our you know understanding of what we need from them and what we need as a, as a team and then the whole state itself there was a situation that i always said i have never experienced a state that is so into football and it just felt as if they actually played the, play the game as well to one we play so and and then the you know the king he, he turns up everywhere to 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 watch football you know that that finals in Batu, I think it's Batukawan in, in Penning. No, not but yes. I think it's Batukawan in Penning. Yes, yes. Yes. When he had to walk to the stadium, that was a, something that I I was a really admiration of. Because it's not anyone is gonna do that. No. Mm, absolutely. With the status of, of, of the Sultan, the, the state of the status of the Sultan in, in, in Malaysia. Not anyone is going to do that. So I was really touched. Even I was not playing that game, but I felt really touched. And, you know, I don't know if you guys remember for 2008, 2008 season, I, I, I was wearing a T-shirt under my my jersey for the whole season. When I scored, I raised up my T-shirt that period in, in the league because he, he was celebrating 50 years as the, the Sultan, so I bought a T-shirt and I used to always mm-hmm. use it, especially at home. I used to always wear it at home. Yes, and I, I still have it in, in St. Vincent. I wow. still have it. it and I'm sure it's a yes. collector's, it's a collector's uh, item for you, Mother. Your whole very yes. Dear yes, your yes, yes, yes. Yes. yes, definitely, because I don't, whatever t- whatever team I play with and I get the T-shirt, I, I doesn't use it. I, I framed it and I keep it as a souvenir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Okay. Yes. And uh, you know, Malad, uh, you did touch about uh, you arriving for ATM uh, earlier, but you know, uh, what, when you left Kedah, there was a period of time. Uh, did you have any hope during that time that you would eventually come back to Malaysia one day? Um. Oh yes. I I, I just was actually waiting for them to say yes. Foreigners are mm-hmm. accepted back into to Malaysia, but my my always my first choice is yes, Kedah. I want to get back in together because yeah. that's where I felt most, 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 most at home. Mm-hmm. But, you know, ATM was the person who, who believed in me, especially Satya and, and the, my agent. So, yeah, definitely. And uh, of course, you know, with, with ATM, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that was another fabulous team that you played for. Uh, what was the feeling like not be able to go out on a high after losing the Malaysia Cup final in that in that season? And I also, and if I'm not mistaken, ATM uh, also finished runners up in the Premier League. So I mean, what was that your year feeling? we finished champion? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So what was your yeah, feeling that unable to win the Malaysia Cup? That was the, that was really disappointed because um, I I thought. I thought we we actually was in in the situation in the nineteen in the ninety minute mm-hmm. we we should have I thought we should have you know we should have come out winner in in that game. Unfortunately, it went to extra time and you know we got beaten by a, a great goal, great build up, a great. But overall, that Malaysia Cup, I think we were we were probably better team in in Malaysia, you know, in the Premier League because mm-hmm. I. I if I remember that period, sooner, actually, as soon as the Malaysia Cup started, I noticed my football. I got I got more faster, more fitter. Mm-hmm. I, I started getting back into my my regular um, youthful, you know, pace and and shooting the ball and get around defenders and stuff. And and it's down to the that that training period of of oh I enjoy training one o'clock in the in the, in the night, on the Ramadan. Yes, I enjoyed it. That period was really, really good for us. We used to put in a very good two hours training from one to three o'clock. Can stand every day, every day. And I, I think the bonding also, the bonding with that team in that period, not just the team itself, you know, the, the entire army fans as well, the entire army organization. Um, if I if I remember the Sponsor, the sponsor, which is Erad, Erad, I think it's Erad Company mm-hmm. in Subang Jail. 
Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah, they were a, they were they were a big part of, of that team as well, mm-hmm. you know, and and you know we we were very close with the 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 owners of the, of that company, and time and time they they tend to to show up and you know have a look at us and you know sometimes he, he would invite us out for drinks and stuff. You know, the, most of the guys with the leader in the team. So it was overall, you know, where we we were always together and supportive to each other. Yes. And and there were some players that was, you know, I already know Ma, I think probably played his better football that year mm-hmm. I have ever seen I already play. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and mm-hmm. we had Bruno Mod, Bruno, Bruno. We had a back four of yes. We had a back four of um Idel and, and Tash and and also Iwan. Iwan that year man that group of guys who was over 30, 33 up, that was that was the fittest I ever seen. All old the the, the ageable players in, in Malaysia played football. We were we were at the age of, of really playing very, very good. Rizal, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, we were a, a team where 90% was over 30. Yes, I, I, I did. Remember. Yes, I sort of re, uh, re, recalling that. That uh, the age group of the players, they were almost like you know in their thirties, but yet still you know they were well driven and playing very hard as well. Yeah, and I think the the, the Indian guy, um, what's his name, Christy. Yes, Christy really come to him, comes out at, at the start of the Malaysian Cup. He was really really well, did mm-hmm. very well for us. You know, it even get him a call up in the national team as well. So. That 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 period here, that that it was it was. I think it, it was a situation where we had some players that much people don't know about in Malaysia, and within that period, it, yes, you know we had Ruben, you know we had Tash, who, who I always, who I always admire as a as a, you know, really good guy, and and then his football started developing very well as well, so. <laughs> And you know, uh, mother, indeed, you know, when you when you speak about these guys, I can see a, a glow, a big glow of joy in your face, and I'm sure you know you you really you really miss these guys and all that. So you know, in your years of you know almost six years in Malaysia, you know, was there any or what was your most memorable game that you recall the most? It can be in any any of those teams that you played for. Yeah. The the most memorable game, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't think there is really one, you know. But um, I, I don't know if you guys remember. Um, I I will say, Slango MK Land versus Slango. Mm-hmm. Two thousand four, the first league game of that season. We were unbeaten. Slango were unbeaten. We go to we go to the Shalom Stadium. And and we come out three two victorious. <laughs> that game was oh god, that was a. It was because the the reason why I said it it's it's my most memorable because it was shocking to the to the to the Stango fans because yeah. MK and the state team who have just not, not probably two years ago formed it and was able to to take Slango with Ali Boy Bam Bam no. Um, Brian Fuentes Fuentes and who was there also was there um, no I don't think Bam Bam was there as yet. Bam Bam, Bam yeah I thought, I think Bam Bam was there mm-hmm. yeah Bam Bam Alia Boy and then the local players who were there Shukwadan yes you know some, Samba yes um, there was a lot from Malacca mm-hmm. who, who come from Malacca Telecom, um, oh, very, very good player. Mm-hmm. Na, um, Naf, Naf, oh, I can't remember his name, you know. But really, really good player. But coming out, coming out victorious in, in that game. And then our MK and also was an age of a team at that time, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was an age of a team. There was a lot from, from Kada. He's, he's Chinese, I think. Um, Liu Kit Kong, is it? Liu Kit, yes. No, no, not Liu Kit Kong. He was, okay. a, he was a midfielder. Center midfielder. Um, okay. 
um, what's his name? Um, some Chingo, I think, some Chingo, something. But and then we had a lot from Kleng, Kleng, uh, Indian guy, Slim. He played for Slango before. Mm-hmm. And my 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 striking partner, um, Padia, some Padia Rao guy, Indian mm-hmm. guy again. Padia Rao, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes, and then we had a, we had a left foot, we had a guy on the left side named Atan, Atan Raj. Yes, but we 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 had three foreigners who was really able to compete in mm-hmm. in that team. You know, they, they took a Croatian guy and me. Yes, that was that was key also because we were really vital combination and contribution to the team. So I I will say MK Land versus Slango. That was my 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 one of my favorite game in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. Uh... Let's touch a little bit on your international career. I mean, what is what uh, I believe you competed in one Gold Cup. If I'm not mistaken, it was in 1996. Uh, I mean, what what? How do you describe about your time with the Saint Saint Vincent and Grenadines national team? Saint Vincent, yes. Um, I actually started playing for the national team at age 17. Mm-hmm. You know, I was selected from the, the secondary school football competition. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I was. I didn't play for probably two years. I didn't. I was in the team all the time, but I didn't play an mm-hmm. international game for over two years mm-hmm. because that that period we had really good, good, good strikers in the team. But I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't really understanding that it was a period of where I need to develop. So, yes, I, I, I just stood there and I, I started developing. In, in every 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 aspect, you know, discipline, physically stronger. But um, yeah, my period internationally is one that I am I'm, I'm proud of because I was able to play. If, if you realize, most of my goals are in the World Cup qualifier. Yes, indeed. And I, I I tend to score goals. I tend to score goals in the qualifying against you know teams like El Salvador, the bigger teams. So he always used to give me that inspiration that, oh yes, I'm, I'm able to play at, 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 at certain levels. So I just need to get out, you know, professionally and, you know, see where I, I can I can get. So um, yes, and again, you know, playing for a country is probably the highest, the highest of, of every football you 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 will imagine. So yeah, that period of probably 19 to 18 years playing for the national team. Yes, I do. I really do enjoy it and feel proud about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was okay. able, I was able to captain the team in my last qualifying, you know, World Cup match um, versus Canada. You know, mm-hmm. that I I scored in that game as well. And that when I I, I landed my contract, my my professional career, that's when I I got a contract to play in 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 the Vancouver White Caps. They were mm-hmm. able to see me in that game. Okay, okay, interesting indeed. Okay, so Elvin, any other question? Yeah, for sure. Just uh, just one more on my side, Malad. You know, because uh, looking back at your at your records with, with all the teams you played in Malaysia, you know, you being a goal machine, and I think you averaged almost a goal every game. I mean, that that that, 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 that is something just amazing, and I'm sure there are a lot of youngsters and all that listening out here to our show now. You know, would do you have any piece of advice for them? To, to, to be this, this, this goal scoring machine, what does it take, you know, to be a Marlon James, for example, in front of goal? Um, yeah, first and foremost, is is it's down to to dedication, discipline, de- determination. You know, um, first and foremost, you you have to be honest with yourself, and and that honesty comes with, yeah, you 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 gotta be able to train. And, and not just training or training with a, a very positive attitude. You know, you, you're you always willing to, to learn and understand that. And then you must understand that when you're training, when you're training, you are developing. So you're able to miss opportunity in training, but you got to continue. Continue training. Believe. You have to have that belief. You know, you can get better and do some things much better. And what I, what I, what I was, was able to do as a, as a youngster, I was able to develop scoring goals in, in anywhere. You know, I scored from left, right, 
I score from header, I score from free kicks. You know, I can pass it in the goal from 25 yards. It, it's just understanding of, of, of the, the position you play and you, you got to look into to international players, see how they, the movements of the ball, understand where you need to be when certain players have the ball. And then lastly, it comes down to the, the, your individual partners on, on the field. You know, I, I play with some great, great midfield players in Malaysia. You know, M. Kelly and I play with um, this guy, oh, what's his name again, from Chile. Really good player. Same same type of player as Nelson as well. You know, when I come to Kada, he's the same kind of player. But Nelson, oh, Nelson, we fit so perfectly. You know, I don't need to, I don't need to call Nelson to, to know, and Nelson don't need to, to call me to know where to put the ball inside. You know, once I'm moving forward, he knows to put it in the space with a, with, a, with a spin. You know, if my back if my back is turned to the defender and I'm facing him, you know, to put it into my feet. Yes. So it's all it's a combination of of of, of hard work in, in in training. So this is what the youngsters in 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 Malaysia, you know, and and physically you need to work very hard. You know, individually itself also, you need to work very hard individually. I work very hard individually. Yeah. So one one thing that I come home for holiday, after I score 40, 50 goals in Malaysia, mm -hmm. I come home for holiday for two weeks, maybe three weeks. No. Every morning I'm up going for my maybe six miles run. I come mm -hmm. back, I do my finishing on the park. Yes, all these yeah. things. It, it's a combination of of, of the, the professionalism that I spoke about when I was in Malaysia. Because, to be honest, you know, Malaysia have developed a lot of, of young players when, since I'm there. And, and it's still happening. But it just, it's just a situation where it gets to a period and it never, it never materialized into that, that big, big, big aspect where a player will get into a big league, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I know there's players who can, who can make that Malaysian, who can go overseas and play. That, that youngster who went to Portugal. Oh, definitely a guy. I, I would have loved him to. But one of the, the things I understand about Malaysian players, personally, they get homesick very, very easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. they, they do. Okay. They do. But it's just a combination of, of, of hard work and, you know, dedication, discipline, determination, and, and just individual aspect of it where you need to be, you know, not just on the field, you know, off the field also. I, I, I used to go home. I, I, I'm in bed 10 o'clock. I mean, I'm up at 4 a.m. already, you know, having my breakfast. If I have 8 o'clock training, I'm already up 5 o'clock having my breakfast. And prepare myself to go to training, and not just not just any breakfast, your big breakfast. <laughs> yeah, you know, toast, crumbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your favorite. Yeah. And okay. that, that oh, that is something I I, I should have mentioned with ATM. Mm -hmm. Even that period with ATM is something that I noticed. The players have changed a lot because a lot of the players that Satya also instill it in the players. You know, a lot of players start eating like the you know European way of how we eat the toast and the scrum leg in the morning, the foods. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of the players that get out the, the normal Malaysian type of breakfast where you have a Nazi and yes. And mm -hmm. and then game day, a lot of the players was having pasta with with you know protein and, and veggie. So it, it was a combination of, of you know good. Nutrition also in, 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 in ATM. Yes. Oh, right. Fantastic. So everybody played their part there. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, def definitely. Definitely. It doesn't yeah. happen. But, but it doesn't happen with, with the coaches is just talking and yeah. you, you, you're not following the instruction and doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's everyone have a, a part to play. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Marlon, to end this episode, what we're going to do, we're going to it's going to be something fun here. We're just going to ask you five simple questions and we just want you to 
to give the first answer that comes to you. I mean, which one ever you feel that comes to your mind at the time. Is it okay? Okay. You... Before... Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay. Before I go on, let me just want to say something to, to the fans. Sure, um, no problem. No yeah, problem. sure. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, right. At the moment, I'm really hoping to get back to Malaysia because um, I, I want to do my autobiography in mm. Malaysian version. Yes, okay. Malaysian version. Oh. And I want to get that done. I want to get that done in Malaysia itself. Mm, okay. So, um, and I, I, I am in the process. Well, I'm actually already planned it. You know, coming to Malaysia, I'm bringing, a, I'm bringing two coaches with me. I want to bring two coaches with me. I want to come over and do a five weeks, you know, some a, a kind of program where, you know, youth development program, you know, like a, like a, like a clinic. And then I, I want to have a football game as well where, you know, my, my Kada 2008 team will mm -hmm. play against maybe this Lango version of, of, of our age. <laughs> okay. you know, and yeah, I, I have something in, in plan to, to come back in, 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 in Malaysia to be in Kada for, it should be no longer than, when I will be there, no longer than eight weeks, eight, mm -hmm. nine weeks. Okay, indeed, indeed, we look yes. forward to have you back ha back here. I'm sure the fans here really, really look forward to see you again. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Okay, so uh, basically, okay, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask you just what, we're gonna <laughs> ask you one very simple question and answer whatever comes to your mind first. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm sure we probably know the answer, but let's try again. Favorite food? Nazaguri. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, um, let's let's uh, let's try something Malaysian. I'm sure you are, you were exposed to this durian. Love it or hate it? Love it. Oh wow! Okay, okay. <laughs> Favorite drink? Fresh orange. Okay, okay. What about tetare? Any any good experience with tetare? Yes, I want to have it at morning, breakfast. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, all right, all right. All right. Okay, are you a cat or a dog person? Or none? Dog. Dog? Okay, all right. Okay. Move for dog, yes. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, um, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie, Save by the Last... Um, Save by the Last Dance? Oh. Uh, mm. Yeah, the see. movie with the, with, the, with the black the black guy with the white girl. Ah, okay, yes. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, interesting. Yes. Yeah. For the last dance. Yep. And uh, just Malan, one more to go. Uh, since you've been in Malaysia, what? And I'm sure you travel a lot. Any favorite holiday destination in Malaysia? Which one you really like? Of course, Langkawi. Ah, okay. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> all right. Interesting. All right. All right. Okay. So, any last word from yourself, Malan? Um, yes, it was definitely a pleasure to be on Bola Bola show, you know, and definitely always looking forward to, to, to be doing interviews when it comes to sports in, in Malaysia. And, and let, let me say something to the, the Malaysian public of, of, of football fans. Sure. In this yeah. time, if, if, in, the, in this time is a very difficult situation. I know. I know all fans want to be out there in the football stadium, but it, it's a very trying times, and we, we must be responsible for everyone's actions and your personal elections. Please stay at home, mm -hmm. be vaccinated. Yes, you can be vaccinated and be, be you know, contracted of the, the virus, but it, it, the efficiency of the vaccination that was that's what is more, more, you know, more important to, to persons being vaccinated. It, it, time, time will come. Time will come when, when we can be out there, you know, in stadium. That maybe might happen when, when I'm back also. So <laughs> keep the yes. finger crossed. Wow, yeah. To the front of, so yeah, the front of manager, stay in door, please, and be safe. Indeed. Oh, well, yeah, hi, very you. nice message from yourself, Marlon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, and, and some, something, um, 
something I should mention. Mm -hmm, um, sure. My good friend, Hayudin Omar. Okay. Um, a shout out to him. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. A lot of guys like Amir and Tash, um, Palom, especially my boy Rizal's the boss. We call him the boss. Rizal's Amri, my good friend in, in Kada Hokish and the fans of Kada. And also Hang Ming, you know, coach, coach Michael Palani and his family, Hang Ming and his family. And then, yeah, as I said, Hayudin really Omar. I should be receiving his product, do a butter, you know, the sauce that he's, he's, he have in his company. So I should be receiving some of that from him. He should be sending that to me in post. <laughs> so, um, okay, yeah, okay. I should, I, I encourage the fans to go out and, you know, have, have his sauce and it seemed like it delicious. So I can't wait to, to taste it. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. You. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Elwin, any last word from yourself? Uh, just, uh, it was an absolute honor, Marlon, to have you on our show. And, you know, thank you. Thank you for joining us today, having this great interview with us already. My, my great big thank you to you. Yes. And, uh, you know, stay stay safe and stay well with your family. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you guys very much. It was a pleasure to be here. Yes. Most welcome indeed, Marlon. And thank you for being part of our Bola Bola Show podcast. Okay. Just send me, just send me a, a version of it when you edit it, please. Sure, definitely. <laughs> we will definitely give thank you a you link to the show. Definitely. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, folks. Bye. That's it. Um, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola Show. Thank you for listening and goodbye. Bye.